The commutative property says that we can add and multiply numbers in any order without changing the sum or the product. Um, the word commute, um, hopefully you're familiar a little bit with that, means to move. Like the morning commute and the evening commute is when people will actually move from home to school or work. And then the evening commute is school or work back to home. So uh, the commutative property looks a little bit like this. Well, we usually use it for a specific reason. So if I have 2 plus 7 plus 8, I can see that the 2 and the 8 go together a little bit easier. And since it's addition, again, I can commute those the 7 and the 8, so that I can add the 2 plus 8 first to get 10 and then add the 7. So just mental math wise, it's easier, it's more convenient to add those together. So for multiplication, let's consider 4 times 6 times 5. Well, I can see that the 6 times the 5 would be a little bit easier to do, because that's 30, and then multiply it by the 4. So 30 times 4 is 120. That's much easier than doing 24 times 5, which you can do, but not, not as easily as 30 times 4. So the commutative property allows us to move it around. The associative property just allows us to regroup addition or subtraction. So we can see that, you know, we could do this addition. I mean, parentheses, we're supposed to do what's inside the parentheses first. So we should do the 6 plus 8. Um, but I notice that if I can add the 4 and the 6 together first, so I can regroup those. This is the associative property of addition. 4 plus 6 first, and then add the 8. Well, that's 18, because 4 plus 6 is 10 plus 8. And in this multiplication one, I can see that doing 5 times 4 gives me 20, so that one would be easier to do first. So. If I move those parentheses 7 times 5 times 4, that allows me to do 5 times 4 and get 20, and then multiply by 7 and get 140. So notice with the associative property that none of the orders change. 4, 6, 8, 4, 6, 8, and 7, 5, 4, 7, 5, 4. So with the associative property, the order does not change, just these parentheses change. We regroup. Now the distributive property is more specifically called the distributive property of multiplication over addition or subtraction. And I'll give an example of each. And the, the distributive property of division over addition or subtraction. Again, I'll give an example. So 6 times the sum of 70 and 2 is we multiply each term in the parentheses by the 6. So this would be 420 plus 12. And that would equal, of course, 432. And this would be the distributive property of multiplication over addition simply because of this add sign right here. And, of course, we're multiplying. So 40, 4 times 30 minus 3. Again, 4 times 30 is 120 minus 4 times 3 is 12 and that would equal 108 and this would be called the dis distributive property of multiplication over subtraction simply because there's subtraction inside now I still call the distributive property the other way around but we really call this factoring so when we factor it's kind of like it's the distributive property in reverse. But it still falls under the distributive property, in this case, of multiplication over addition, again, because of the addition. But the way we would distribute kind of backwards is we see that they each have a factor of 7. So since they have the same factor, we can take that out and do this as, or make it 7 times 8 plus 22. Of course, that would become... 7 times 30, which very quickly and easily becomes 210. Again, with subtraction, so again, this would still be officially the distributive property of multiplication over subtraction, even though we're really factoring. I see a common factor of 9, so I can bring out the 9, 
and what's left is 17 minus 6. And I would do that because I can see that that's going to be 9 times 11, and that's going to be much easier to do than 9 times 17 and subtract 9 times 6 from it. So, 99. Now with the distributive property of division over addition or subtraction, we mainly just see like this. So this one would be the distributive property of division over, or of the, yeah, division over addition because of the addition sign. And this one, of course, would be the distributive property of division over subtraction simply because of the subtraction sign. And again, this one can go either way, forward or backward, meaning I could be going from this situation to that situation or from this situation that way, and it's still called distributive property of division over addition. Likewise, over here, you can start here and go that way, or start with this situation and go that way, both called the distributive property of division over subtraction. And here we have the last five properties we're going to talk about today, or at least in this video. The additive inverse, multiplicative inverse, additive identity, multiplicative identity, and the zero property. So the additive inverse is defined as what you add to a number to equal zero. So one example would be 7. The additive, additive inverse would be negative 7. Because 7 plus negative 7 equals zero. Likewise, if I had negative 13, the additive inverse would be 13, because negative 13 plus 13 equals 0. The multiplicative inverse is what you multiply a number by to equal 1, also known as the reciprocal. So as an example, if we have 3 fourths, the multiplicative inverse would be 4 thirds because 3 fourths times 4 thirds equals 1. Also, negative 7 fifths, its multiplicative inverse would be negative 5 sevenths because negative 7 fifths times negative 5 sevenths equals positive 1. The additive identity is what you add to a number so that it stays the same. Basically this is adding 0, which doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense now, but later on in math it's going to be very helpful. But for example, 4 plus 0 equals 4. The multiplicative identity is what you multiply a number by so that it stays the same. Now it may not look the same. This one's easier to explain why we would need it. Um, for instance, um, well, one very obvious way of looking at this one is 8 times 1 equals 8. That's not really where we'd use it. Where we, we'd, we might actually use it is if we have something like 3 fourths plus 2 fifths. Well, in order to add these fractions together, I need a common denominator. So I multiply 3 fourths by 5 over 5 to get a common denominator, and 2 fifths by 4 over 4. So that that would equal 15 twentieths plus 8 twentieths. So both of these fractions are still equivalent to these. 15 twentieths equals 3 fourths, and 8 twentieths equals 2 fifths. We multiplied them by 1, so we didn't change their value. And the zero property says that any number times zero is zero. And most of us understand that. You know, 74 times zero equals zero.